William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Murderers may have their difficulties, but they do have one advantage over the rest of us. Their work may be killing, but it's not they who get killed. Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment, and the National Broadcasting Company present William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. But before we bring you tonight's story, a word from Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment. Hey, Pop, what are you doing? Setting the clock, boy. What for, Pop? Getting up early tomorrow. Got to go get us a Coleman heater while the big bonus sale is on. Yes, now's the time to plan ahead for a warm house all winter. Buy your Coleman heater during Coleman's bonus sale. You get three big bonuses. A new low price. Now you can get a Coleman oil or gas heater at a new low price. A new low operating cost. You'll save up to 25% on heating bills because Coleman has exclusive fuel air control. Gives you maximum heat from the fuel you use. And a 32-piece set of Libby Safe Edge glassware worth $14 in any store, free with your Coleman oil or gas heater. Get these three big bonuses during Coleman's big bonus sale. This offer is for a short time only, so see your Coleman dealer tomorrow. Look for his name in your telephone directory. Remember, comfort costs so little with a Coleman. Barry Craig speaking. I suppose the classic position in which confidential investigators are generally supposed to be found is lurking in a doorway. I was in such a position this particular evening, but I wasn't enjoying it. For one thing, the doorway was drafty. For another, it was raining outside. And for a third, if that's necessary, I hadn't liked the assignment in the first place. All I had to do was wait in the doorway until a man named Sam Jenkins made an appearance, then go home. The next morning, I type up a report to the effect that Sam Jenkins was seen leaving 1012 East 43rd Street at 11.01 p.m. the previous night and mail it to his business associates. Generally, there's a check in the return mail, all of which is fine, but not especially exciting, except that sometimes it gets exciting anyway. Am I blocking your view, mister? That would depend on what I was looking at. Let's say the house across the street. It's a large house. I'm a large man. I've noticed that. Well, then why not take a walk down the street? I like it here. Look, mister, why don't you go find yourself a keyhole to peep through and save yourself some trouble? Maybe I like trouble. You figuring on making some for me? Okay. I think I'm going to enjoy this. Enjoy what? Slugs in your stomach? The gun's loaded. I've got a license for it, and I'd be delighted to explain the whole thing to the police. It's your move. You feel pretty brave standing there behind a gun, don't you? Not especially. I just happen to be working, and I don't like interruptions. I'll get in touch with you some other time, wise guy. Please do. Goodbye. The large gentleman moved down the street, turned the corner, and that was the end of it for the time being. It was a pretty obvious effort to make me stop watching the house opposite and Jenkins exit therefrom. It hadn't worked, though. At least at the time, I thought it had. By the time a couple of hours had rolled by, I wasn't so sure. The rain had stopped and the night was getting old. Jenkins was still in the house opposite. He wasn't supposed to know I was following him and reporting to his associates. Up until the time I made my move across the street, I was pretty sure he hadn't known. That didn't explain why he was still in the house. I decided he might just as well find out about me. Yes? Oh, excuse me. I'm looking for a man named Sam Jenkins. That sounds like a very dull thing to be looking for. I'm a very dull type. Still in my own dull way, I'd like to speak to Mr. Jenkins. Oh, don't misunderstand me. I've no objections to your speaking to Mr. Jenkins. You're making it a little difficult for me to get at him without running over you. That sounds as if you thought he was in my house. He is. You must have a very good reason for thinking so. I have. The best of all possible reasons. 
I saw him go in three and one quarter hours ago. The time was 9.43, exactly. He must be a train announcer or something. I mean, who else keeps such careful track of the time? Investigators do. Oh, I see. I don't have a search warrant, Miss... Uh... My name is Lynn Walters. Uh, Barry Craig's mine. Would you like to look at my credentials? Oh, I don't really think so. Okay. As I was saying, I don't have a search warrant, Miss Walters. If I were to force my way into your house, it would be illegal. The licensing board wouldn't pat me approvingly on the head. Does that matter very much to you? Matters a great deal. So I'm not going to force my way into your house. I'm going to figure that you're as bright as you look. Why, thank you, Mr. Craig. And that, therefore, you're going to ask me in. Well, at least it's different. What is? Your approach. But it's terribly late. I'm alone in the house. My offer to show you my credentials still holds. I guess you can come in. Thanks. Now, are you going to ransack the house thoroughly, searching in every nook and cranny for, uh, uh, Sam Jenkins, I think you said? I said Sam Jenkins. And, of course, I'm not going to search the house. What? That little routine at the front door could have given half a dozen Sam Jenkinses time to get out through the back door. But I thought you said there was only one Sam Jenkins. All right. Then he could have left six times. (laughs) Mr. Craig, you're losing your temper. You could say that. Also, it happens to be true. Sure, I'm losing my temper. Partially because you're a fool. I am? I can testify on oath that Sam Jenkins entered this house tonight. The fact that I didn't see him leave isn't of any great importance. I would have preferred to include it in my report to my employer, however. That's the only reason I rang your doorbell. You stalled me and gave Jenkins a chance to get out the back way. I don't mind, particularly. Then why did you lose your temper? Because I'm a sucker for pretty women. I like to think that their lives are as clean and as clear as their skin and eyes and hair. A very pretty speech, Mr. Craig. Yeah. And the funny part of it is, I mean it. Good night, Miss Walters. Uh, Wait. I never thought very highly of men in your particular profession, Mr. Craig. That's okay. Neither have I. But I suppose it can be an honest and decent job. I try to make it so. Suppose Sam Jenkins were here and you reported him. Would that be very bad? For whom? For Sam. According to the story furnished me with my fee when I accepted the job, Sam Jenkins' partners suspected that he was releasing confidential information about the firm's operations releasing them to people who would then be able to compete unfairly with the firm to which Jenkins belonged. According to further information given me, you were one of those people. Jenkins' associates wanted to be sure, however, that he was in contact with you before proceeding to take whatever steps they would then deem necessary. They can be sure now. Suppose I told you that it wasn't quite that simple, Mr. Craig. I'm afraid I wouldn't believe you. Because you think I'm a liar? Because I always believe a client until I'm forced to think otherwise. I can force you to think otherwise, Mr. Craig, by telling you what's really behind all this. That's up to you. I'm not asking. I understand. Mr. Craig, Sam's partners are two men named Griffith and Swenson. Sam owns half the firm. They own the other half. They've been trying for years now to force Sam to sell his half of the partnership and leave the business. They haven't been successful. Maybe that's so. But what difference does it make as far as my report goes? The reason they want that report is because Sam Jenkins is married. His wife is a very jealous woman. If you turn that report into them, they'll take it to his wife, or perhaps they'll threaten to unless Sam sells out. I don't handle divorce cases. Griffith and Swenson must have known that. That's why they told you the story they did. You can prove this? It's true, but how can a thing like that be proved? Good night, Miss Walters. You're going to send the report in? So far tonight, two people have tried to stop me from reporting on Jenkins. Yourself and... Myself and who? He didn't give his name, but he was a large man, maybe 6'2", broad-shouldered, dark-skinned, light eyes, gray, maybe, or blue. Uh, He wore... uh, The Squallers. She fainted. It was a genuine faint. She hit the floor solidly. I tried to get her out of it by shaking her a bit, but it didn't work. A little first aid would be necessary. I'd need water. It was a fairly large house. I had a little trouble finding the kitchen. Finally, I found it. I found something else, too, though. Sam Jenkins. But a Sam Jenkins who wouldn't walk through any more doorways because he'd walked through the last one into death. Oh. Here. Here. Try drinking some of this. What? Oh. Thank you. Feel better? I suppose so. 
I guess I fainted, didn't I? You fainted. Here, let me help you up. Oh. Hey, better grab a chair. Yeah. That was very silly of me. What's his name, the boy with the broad shoulders? You mean Baldwin? Oh, you tricked me into answering that. Is there any reason why I shouldn't know his name? It doesn't have anything to do with, with anything. Maybe you're right. I got the water you've been drinking in the kitchen. From everything I hear, that's an awfully good place to get water. I ran into something while I was there, something I hadn't expected. Are you going to complain about my housekeeping? Maybe. I don't think you tidied up as well as you might have. Oh, you're embarrassing me. I think you're the one who ought to call the police, Miss Wallace. They might give you a better break if you did. Call the police? About domestic untidiness? Yeah. When that untidiness includes a corpse. <gasps> I'm not very good at being subtle about things. Well, what are you trying to say? I told you I was in your kitchen. Someone else was there, too. Someone who's going to stay there until he's carried away. Sam? Sam Jenkins, yes. Well, you must be mistaken. There are a lot of things I could be mistaken about, but they don't include corpses. I don't, I don't understand how you... He was stabbed. I didn't touch the knife, but from what I could see of it, it came from someone's kitchen. I'd say the odds were that it came from yours. She didn't faint again. She just turned white. After a while, she had a look at what was lying on our kitchen floor. Maybe she'd seen the body before, maybe not. She managed to make her phone call, and the police arrived. I wasn't there to greet them, though, because I'd managed to persuade her to furnish me with Mr. Baldwin's first name. It was Frank. She didn't know, or at least she said she didn't know, his address. I went back to my original employer to make my report in person. What is it? Barry Craig, Mr. Griffith. Just a moment. Uh, what on earth do you... have got neighbors. I don't think they'd be interested. I'm sorry. Come in. Thank you. I presume you have something to report, Craig, but isn't your zeal a little excessive? It's one in the morning. I know it's one in the morning. And I can't imagine anything being so urgent that it requires waking me at this hour. How about murder? Are you drunk? No. Who was murdered? Your former associate, Sam Jenkins. Now, that's impossible. Why? Did you think he was immortal? No, of course not, but... This is quite a shock to me, Craig. Mind if I sit down? Not at all. I don't understand why it's such a shock, though. You wanted to get rid of him. I don't like the way you put that. Swenson and I were convinced he was selling the firm out. Therefore, we decided to take steps about it, but... Steps short of murder? Would we have employed you if violence was our intention? That's the point. It's probably even a good one. But before I give you the rest of the report, who's Frank Baldwin? Frank? Oh, yes. Well, he was a rather well-known football player at one time. I think he was engaged to marry Lynn Walters. Nothing ever happened. Since then, he's been around. So far as I know, he hasn't earned an honest dollar since he left school. He's grown a lot, though. Sam Jenkins was found dead in the kitchen of Lynn Walter's home. L Lynn Walter's home? Then he was seeing her. Your ideas about that seem to have been correct. However, I'd like a little reassurance on one point. What's that? According to Lynn Walters, the reason you wanted him followed to her place, the reason you wanted me to turn in an official report to that effect, was because Jenkins' wife is insanely jealous. Again, according to Miss Walters, you were to use that report as a club over Jenkins' head to force him into leaving the firm. Why, this is complete nonsense. Okay. Now, since Jenkins is dead, I don't suppose that there's any further reason you'd want me to stay on in your employ, is there? I suppose not. We'll send you a check in the morning. Fine. And that, of course, means uh, you're not my client anymore, Mr. Griffin. Yes, I suppose that's correct. I think it's fine. Because now I can tell you that you're a liar. I didn't slam the door behind me, but I left. I didn't report to Swenson, either. Griffith would take care of that. I went looking for a man named Frank Baldwin, who hadn't earned an honest dollar for years. A man who at one time had been engaged to Lynn Walters and might still be in love with her. A man who had known that the front door of her house was being watched. And who might have checked on the back door. The one that led to the kitchen. Hello, Baldwin. 
Who? Oh. Number six ball in the side pocket. Hey, that was a nice shot. Thanks. Also proves you've got nerves of steel. Look, run away. You annoy me. I'm just beginning to annoy you, Baldwin. Don't you want to know how I found out your name? I'm not interested. You should be. When old girlfriends start talking about a man... What old girlfriend? Lynn Wallace. She told you my name? Lynn wouldn't have done that. Maybe not, under ordinary circumstances. But a girl who suddenly discovers herself to be supplied with a corpse in the kitchen is likely to lose her head. What are you trying to give me? A bad time. How am I doing? You still got that gun? I've got it, but it's in my pocket now. I'm not working, you might say. Let's go for a walk, huh? Sure. Oh, uh, leave your cue stick here, though. Ah, oh, I'm terribly absent-minded. Come on. <clears throat> kind of late, isn't it? Depends on the hours you keep. Listen, I gotta know. You said something about a corpse in Lynn's kitchen. Who was it? Who do you think? I'm not thinking. I'm asking. Okay, don't get excited. It's no secret by this time. Sam Jenkins. You sure of that? I saw him. There's something wrong. You... Because there was a corpse, you mean? Or because it was the wrong corpse? I don't think we're going to carry this conversation on any further. I've got to go pay a couple of visits. Okay. But uh, before you do, Baldwin... Yeah? Have you got any reason to worry about a parked car down the block a bit? A parked car? Why should I worry about it? I don't know, but the motor is idling. The lights are off. It could be waiting for somebody. Maybe you, maybe me. You're just wasting time. My time. So long. So long. Baldwin! Baldwin! He could be paged from now to doomsday, Mr. Baldwin, but he wouldn't answer. Mr. Baldwin hadn't known it, but he had a lot to worry about. Now he had no more worries. A half dozen bullets had cut him almost in half. Barry. Yes, Lieutenant Rogers. You think you could spot the car if you saw it again? Well, in view of the fact that they make 100,000 like it every year in Detroit, I might have a little trouble. They wouldn't have been using their own license plates. Professionals never do. Barry, does this tie up with the Jenkins killing? Of course it does. We didn't hold the Wallers, girl. Maybe we should have. Did you have any good reasons to? One advantage of being a policeman is you don't always have to have a good reason. At least not for a while. You mean Lynn Walters could have arranged to have Mr. Baldwin knocked off? I mean she could have done it herself. Oh, it's a possibility, but I don't think so. Well, maybe we didn't have evidence that she killed Jenkins, Barry. We don't have evidence that she didn't either. How long ago did you release the girl? An hour ago, maybe. Well, that's too bad. She would have had enough time. Have you got any men on her at the house? Plain clothesmen out in front. There's also a back door. I know that, but I didn't expect this. Neither did Baldwin. You won't need me now, will you? What good would it do me if I said yes? <laughs> Thanks, Trav. I'm going to visit Lynn Wallers. In the spirit of good, clean fun? Not exactly. Preventive medicine? Not that either. I think maybe I might acquire a new client. Mr. Craig. Mr. Craig. Mind if I come in? I guess not. After tonight, I very much doubt I'll ever mind anything again. You'll get over it. That is, if you haven't been going around killing people. I didn't kill Sam. Wait, you said people. Does that mean... Yes. It means someone else has been killed, too. I hope it comes as a surprise to you. Well, of course it does. I don't even know who... Who was it? Judging from all indications, Sam Jenkins was a boyfriend of yours. He was a friend. All right, we'll accept that version for the time being. You had another friend at one time. Frank Baldwin? Yes. Yeah. This doesn't seem to be a very good season for friends of yours. You mean it was Frank who died? Let's not be delicate. I mean it was Frank who was murdered. I suppose I should react more strongly to that. I can't. I'm completely numb. If that's the truth, I think you ought to hire yourself a detective. You're going to need one. Why? Sam Jenkins was killed in your house at a time when you could have been alone with him. 
Frank Baldwin could have been killed by anyone. Perhaps it's only a coincidence that he died on the same night that Sam Jenkins did. The district attorney is likely to start brooding about that and decide it isn't a coincidence at all. I can't pretend I don't understand what you're saying. I can't pretend that I care very much either. Were you in love with Jenkins? I've already told you he was a friend, a good friend, but nothing more. In that case, tomorrow morning we'll find you feeling a lot different. Hire me for tomorrow morning, huh? Well, all right. But why are you so insistent? You need the work? No, but I've been used in this thing. I don't like being used. I need the standing that having you as my client would give me. Let's say the fee will be one dollar per day, no expenses. That's very cheap. I don't think it's going to take very long. Now tell me that you didn't kill Jenkins and Baldwin again, please. I didn't kill Sam Jenkins. I didn't kill Frank Baldwin. Thanks. You know what the funny part of it is? What? Ninety-nine people out of a hundred would be sure that you're lying. I think you're telling the truth. I left. I had a couple of calls to make. I didn't think either of them would take very long. At the salary I was working for, I couldn't afford to let them. Mr. Griffith wasn't at home. It was kind of late for a dignified gentleman like Griffith to be abroad, especially in view of the fuss he'd made when I waked him earlier. Then I thought that perhaps tender solicitude had touched his heart. Perhaps he had gone to console Sam Jenkins' widow. I decided I'd go help him. Who's there? The name is Craig, Mrs. Jenkins. What do you want? Among other things, I don't want to be shouting through a shut door. I'm sorry, but it's really quite late. You're still up. I don't think that's of any particular concern of yours. It is? I'm looking for Mr. Griffith. He's not here. Sure he's here. His car is parked out front. Oh, I guess you'd better come in. Thank you. Who is that? Oh, hello, Mr. Griffith. Uh, Anne, why did you... You saw your car parked in front. I didn't take my car. I used a taxi. Never mind. Very clever, Craig. Thanks. I don't know exactly what you had in mind coming here. You're not employed by me anymore, you know. I know. Therefore, you're off the case, and... uh... Sorry, I'm not off the case. I've just changed employers. What are you talking about? To be precise and personal, I'm talking about Lynn Walters. Miss Walters hired you? At my suggestion, she did. She got a bargain. Uh, What did she hire you to do? To make sure that she doesn't wind up taking the rap for two murders, Mr. Griffith. Oh, yes? Are you sure that she didn't commit them? Of course I'm sure. Why? She told me she didn't. This is ridiculous. I suggest you get out of here immediately, Craig. Before you call the police? That's right. If you persist in annoying Mrs. Jenkins and myself... The trouble is, Mr. Griffith, I'm afraid I'm going to have to annoy you a lot more before I leave. Tom, I can't take much more of this after Sam's death and all... Mrs. Jenkins... I don't like to intrude on a lady's grief, but I'm afraid I'll have to. You see, immediately after I terminated my employment with Mr. Griffith, I called him a liar. I don't care what... You'd better. Griffith and Swenson hired me to find proof against your husband. Proof that he was betraying professional secrets to a competitive firm. I watched your husband for a while and found that he went nowhere near any such competitor. I did discover, however, that he was paying visits to Lynn Walters. When I reported this to Mr. Griffith, he was delighted. He wanted me to make a final check and turn in a report. Lynn Walters is not a business firm. Very well, so she isn't. I I fail to see why you have to tell us all this. I didn't discover until I was already on the case that this was a matter of domestic relations and possibly divorce. So far as Lynn Walters knew, she thought that my report would be used to blackmail Sam Jenkins into quitting the firm and giving up his interest in it. But since I find Mr. Griffith here, it becomes obvious that that report was to be used in divorce proceedings. Presumably, the idea was to get rid of Jenkins, not only from the firm, but from your life as well. Tom, you do something about this man. Now, look here, Craig. Even if what you say should be true... Thanks for telling me that it is. We come to something else. While I was watching outside Lynn Wallace's house, a man named Frank Baldwin came along and made an effort to get me to leave. I didn't budge. Frank Baldwin himself left. Well, that's of no interest. You keep saying that. Why? Because all this is important? I fail to see what can be important about it. Just this. His effort to make me move was intentionally weak. He didn't intend to succeed. Furthermore, he knew who I was. 
which meant that he had been hired to annoy me, but not to move me from my position. Hired by someone who knew that I was being employed to watch Sam Jenkins. The purpose of his approaching me was to make me think that it was Lynn Walters. But Lynn Walters didn't know that Jenkins was being followed. Neither did Jenkins. I know my business well enough to be sure of that. Are you implying that I hired this man Baldwin? I'm implying that the murderer of Sam Jenkins and Frank Baldwin hired him. Why, all this is nonsense. If Baldwin had been hired by the murderer of Sam Jenkins, why did that murderer kill Baldwin, too? For a simple reason, safety. Whoever did the murders was someone who wanted to be very sure of things. Someone who didn't trust legal processes and divorce courts. Someone who didn't trust the hired allegiance of a thug like Baldwin. Ah, I thought you were an honest fool, Craig. I'm beginning to think now that you're not a fool, and perhaps not honest. That's why you're waving that gun at me? Yes, I just want to be sure. The murderer wanted to be sure, too. But how sure is she? How sure can she ever be? You mean Lynn Walters did kill Sam? Lynn Walters isn't the only woman in the case. Tom, did you hear what he said? Why, the man's raving. When Baldwin was gunned down, I was within 100 feet of him. He didn't die immediately. Before he did, he had a chance to tell me who had hired him to serve as a red herring. Who had hired him to keep me pinned out in front of the house while she was killing her husband and back. No man could have lived to tell you that with half a dozen bullets in him. How did you know how many bullets he had in him, Mrs. Jenkins, unless you'd shot him yourself? Mr. Griffith, I suggest that you have just captured a dangerous murderer. Keep that revolver on her until the police get here, and, uh, my congratulations. <laughs> I wasn't particularly happy about the case. I never am when it's a question of murder. No matter how well justice may be served, people have died, sometimes unnecessarily and always violently. I felt depressed. I wondered if Lynn Walters felt depressed, too. I decided to go visit her and match depressions. Funny thing, as soon as I decided to do that, I began to feel a lot less depressed. I wonder why. been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Kitchens Come With Knives, was written by Lou Vittis. Next week, it's the strange story titled Corpse with a Pedigree, about which Barry Craig has this to say. Next week, a professor who marries a shimmy dancer loses face generally and his life particularly. When a trio of pedigreed heirs find that they have only homicide in common. Good night, folks. See you next week. Coleman, America's leader in modern automatic home heating equipment, and the National Broadcasting Company have brought you William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Featured in the role of Lynn was Barbara Weeks. Don Pardo speaking. Every 20 seconds through the year, a fire breaks out in the United States. These fires kill 11,000 persons each year and destroy $7 million worth of property. Protect your home from fire by following these simple safety precautions. Don't smoke in bed or throw away lighted cigarettes. Clean out closets, attics, basements. Repair defective electric equipment and replace worn or frayed wiring. Fires in the home, your home, can and must be prevented. Tonight, listen to Dragnet on NBC.